Hello there, DFS family, and welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. Now, after a 131 to 101 victory, I once again am your host, Dave Eddy. You can, of course, find me on Twitter um, at Corporal Eddy. Now, as always, even though he's a big loser, I am still blessed by the presence of my handsome sidekick, Mr. Patrick Mikowski, whom, if you would like, you can follow on Twitter at PattyMac33. Now, as always here, before we get started, please do us a quick favor and hit that like button. Now, if you enjoy this podcast, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, then go ahead and swing on over to fantasy6pack.net to check out more great content. Now, Patrick, me throwing you a beat down is just getting to be old news. So, listen, I don't want to spend too much time dwelling on another victory. So, I'll just simply say, suck it, Pat. Yeah, Davey, we definitely lit the world on fire last weekend with our lineups. Uh, tough week going into it. We knew that. And uh, we both performed uh, rather well, I would say. Uh, not so much. But another week, new week. I'm ready. I got to get back on the horse. I got to get you off this high horse you're riding. So let's uh, let's do it this week, eh? All right. Well, normally I would say winners can go first, but I'm feeling awfully generous, Patrick. So why don't you go ahead and lead us off with your your gospel for this week? All right. Well, my gospel this week, um, great matchup. Uh, the kid is big. He's athletic. Whoa. Hey, hey, kids, listen to this. Kids, listen to this. I'm rolling with Josh Allen. 7,000 bucks Seahawks at the Bills. You know, it just goes down to the matchup and then the talent with this kid. Uh, Seattle's given up almost 28 fantasy points a game to opposing quarterbacks while allowing almost or over 360 yards a game through the air. Not to mention on the season, they've given up four rushing touchdowns, which is something that we know Allen is fully capable um, of doing with his legs. Uh, the Seattle defense has given up over 21 catches a game to opposing wide receivers um, to the tune of almost 36 fantasy points a game. Uh, a lot of really solid stacking options in this one. I like Allen squaring up with Big Russ this week. I think they go toe-to-toe. I'm going to roll some Josh Allen. Yeah, I hear you, man. I think that's an easy one to stack. Um, I mean, probably the Buffalo side of it's pretty easy with Diggs. I think the Seattle side of it is going to be Metcalf. There are some good, uh, well, I don't know about good, but there's some, there's some really value um, running backs this week as well. So you can definitely make pretty much anything work as long as, you know, you're in on the right running backs that are, that are cheap. Now, I mean, tell me if you've heard this before, Patrick, but... Again, before I get to my gospel, I just I have to ask again because I asked last week and you were a little bit confused, and so I just want to I want to come back to this again here. Do you know of anyone that likes to pay down at quarterback? Okay. Does anyone come to mind this week? Uh, any any player any DFS player that you can think of that likes to play cheaper quarterbacks? Yeah, and it appears that he keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. So I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to go with the right answer this week, Dave, and I'm going to say you. That hey, David. that is correct. In the spirit of being thrifty at quarterback, my gospel this week, not contrarian, not not pivot, my gospel this week is Mr. Drew Locke. 5200 bucks. Broncos at the Falcons. I am hopeful that this is going to be a sneaky play this week. There are quite a few games, seven if you can count that high, Patrick, that have a higher over-under this week. And there are a lot uh, more expensive quarterbacks, such as Josh Allen, uh, with very solid matchups this week. Now, like we said, it's been well established that I like to pay down at quarterback when possible. For me, this is an absolutely great matchup for Locke. 
Falcons are dead last in points against QBs. They allow 25.6 points per game. If Locke can even match those numbers, we're talking about a nice little 5x day. Now, the only issue that I have is whom to stack him with. They've got some good options, but nobody that really is blatantly obvious. I think there are really only two options, uh, Jerry Judy and Noah Fant. Now, Atlanta is fourth worst against wide receivers this year, giving up just over 29 points a game. They are the worst against tight ends, giving up a little bit more than 12 and a half points a game. So either one of them is viable. And hell, I'll tell you what, I'm probably going to throw a huge game stack in play here, playing both of them with Locke and running it back with Julio Jones with Calvin Ridley being out. Yeah, that's uh, definitely thrifty. I can I can see uh, the potential there um, with that stack, saving some money for sure. Yeah, I think Judy's only uh, forty eight hundred dollars. Um, yeah. My guess is Fant is probably between about five and five and a half. Um, I'm sure Julio is probably like in the eight thousand range. Um, but yeah, man, I, I think that's got some potential i think it's going to be like i said very sneaky because i don't think a lot of people are going to be in on this game but i think that's going to be one of the higher scoring games of the week uh that's interesting to me uh and i definitely think that as a core play um you will be one of the very few if you run him out there and I don't know, more than, what, 20, 25% of your lineups? What are you thinking, Dave? Um, I have to see where the where everything sits come Sunday, but I am for sure going to have three of these stacks, probably going to have four, which puts me at about 20%. So, um, yeah, and about 35% is about where I would max out any quarterback any week. Um so yeah, he's, he's going to be, if not the highest, then definitely one of the highest um, owned quarterbacks this week. And I really like Jerry Judy, honestly. I mean, at $4,800, um, the top Atlanta cornerback is bottom 10 in the league in tar- in, um, in targets against and yards against. He's, he's terrible. Um, so I'm not so much a, a Judy fan or a Locke fan as I am of this matchup this week. There's going to be volume. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that one. I won't be playing very much Drew Locke at all. I, I may well just play this but, against you this week, Patrick. What do you think of that? I think I think that you definitely should. Mm-hmm. Or, okay. or I challenge you to play my devil against me this week. Uh, you know, I, I actually the really like your afraid. devil pick. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. And, and that's that's kind of where I'm at with this one is I I got Kyler Murray, David, as as my devil, the guy that I'm fading this week because the Miami Dolphins have been sneaky, sneaky good this season against opposing quarterbacks, only allowing 16 fantasy points a game. Over their last five games, they've only allowed a little over 11. Now, don't get me wrong. You look at the stats, you look at how this kid is playing. Murray has been exceptional this season. But I'm going to fade him just because I feel that there are a handful of quarterbacks at a cheaper price with better matchups, with a little bit higher upside this weekend. So Kyler Murray, I am fading. Take it away, David Eddy. I actually kind of, like I said, I like Murray a little bit this week. I like I like running quarterbacks. Uh, when they go up against um, blitz-heavy defenses because I think it, it it gives a higher ceiling to those rushing yards. Now, I don't know that I will play Murray because, like you said, it is actually a surprisingly tough matchup. I, I think if you didn't, you know, if you weren't following closely, you wouldn't realize exactly, you know, how good that Finn's defense has been. Um, and I kind of don't even hate, and this is going to sound crazy, and I'm not going to play it, but... I could definitely see people throwing a little bit of Tua out there and not putting him with Parker um, because Patrick Peterson's been real good this year, but pairing him with Preston Wilson and then running that back with like 
Chase Edmonds maybe. Another very cheap stack, but I think that, that, that takes a lot of balls to put Tua in right now. But um, if I was doing like 150 max, I promise you I would have at least one or two of those. Now, my devil for this week is a little bit more obvious, I think. I'm going to be surprised if this guy is is rostered in 1% uh, of leagues. But for me, it's Mike Davis, 6700 bucks as the Panthers take on the Chiefs. Now, the biggest thing here is it looks as though CMC is going to be back. Now, we don't know exactly what his workload is going to be. But I would say best case scenario for Davis is that he got a 50-50 split this week. Now, I honestly don't even think he's going to see the ball that much. Now, more than anything, even if CMC doesn't play, Davis still is the sixth highest um, or sixth most expensive running back on this week's slate. Not only that, but the Chiefs defense has been solid all year, and his price wouldn't be anything close to a good value. So no matter if he was the only running back on the roster, I I still wouldn't be playing Davis this week. So Mike Davis will not even be in my player pool this week. Yeah, and if CMC is back and it's looking like that's going to happen, yes, then that is Mike Davis as a fade. The only thing, the only running back you could fade more obviously than <laughs> Mike Davis would be one that is retired and no longer playing or maybe actually in the ground somewhere. So, so if you uh, had to pick this week, gun to your head, you got three choices. Tell me who you're taking. Oh, no. you, are you ready? Yep. All right, you got three choices. Number one, Barry Sanders. Number two, O.J. Simpson. Number three, Mike Davis. Uh, give me, I mean, Barry. I got to take Barry. Barry's still, Barry can still play, I bet. Yeah, Barry, Barry's still going to give me the best chance to score points this weekend. Yeah, Barry's going to give you a good chance. Um, there, there's a, It's a coin flip if OJ will be in jail come the weekend. And then right. Mike Davis has CMC ahead of him. I don't. I, I think he made the right choice. Yeah, I, and it would all depend on if they could even find gloves that would fit OJ or not. We're not <laughs> right, sure. Right, 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 right. Uh, let's go ahead and get to your Archangel this week, Patrick. Uh, I think this is going to be a team that uh, is already familiar to us. Yeah. So you kind of mentioned him a little bit earlier. I did, Archangel, didn't I? Yeah, my pivot is none other than Chase Edmonds. 6800 bucks, fins at the cards. You know, with Kenyon Drake out, Edmonds takes over as that lead back in Arizona. Miami's given up, although their secondary's been playing great, they're giving up about five yards a carry, over 100 yards a game, and over 20 fantasy points a game to opposing running backs. Um, on the season, not to mention almost six catches a game um, and 50 yards uh, to opposing running backs out of the backfield catching the ball. So on the year this year, Chase Edmonds averaging over six yards a carry. He's got 26 catches on 32 targets. Uh, I just think that the game sets up nicely. And being the fact that I'm fading Murray, I think the game plan has to go elsewhere, and I think that other direction is Mr. Chase Edmonds. Yep, and when I looked at pricing for the first time this week on Tuesday morning, he was the guy that stood out to me the most. He was my initial reaction of, this is the guy that I'm going to roster more than anybody. As the week has gone on, I wouldn't say I've soured on him so much as I just, I just wonder this week, to me... The challenge isn't like it was like the past two weeks where I thought salary was really tough. I think that salary is much easier, um, much easier this week. Uh, I think there's a lot of options that you can go to save money and and still be in good shape. I'm worried about ownership percentages this week. I just there's so many there's so many guys that are either in great spots or are just really good values or just have a ridiculously good matchup. Um, you've got CMC who's back in the mix, um, at only 8,600. So I guess a lot of what I'm going to do this week is going to come down to where I think some of these guys are going to be owned. Um, cause I could see myself being really high on a lot of guys, but I kind of want to be higher where other people are lower. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? 
So, uh, yep. so with that being said, that that is a good segue into my archangel for this week, and that is Derrick Henry at a whopping seventy nine hundred bucks um, as the Texans take on the Bears. Now, this doesn't seem like a natural pivot as Henry is the second most expensive running back on the slate. Uh, he's three hundred bucks behind Dalvin Cook. Um, who I had strongly considered for my core play this week, but uh, I figured that was a little too obvious, and I'm not even sure that he's going to be a, a, a high-owned play for me this week. But like I said, I, I think that Cooks is likely to be the highest-owned player on this slate, and I don't think that's unfair at all. I'm definitely going to have some of him. I just am not quite sure how much. So... I think that this actually lines up as a really good week to take some of those shares that were going to go to Cook and go ahead and just pivot that to Henry. Like, it's a natural pivot. It's, you know, basically the same price. Um, And, I mean, I think we all can agree that Henry is an absolute beast. He is guaranteed to get as many touches as anyone in the league on any given week. So there's no question about, you know, you know, playing good players and, you know, pivoting to somebody that, you know, is a little bit scary. Now, the Bears are second in the league against wide receivers this year. So I think that even though they're a solid 12th against running backs, I think that gives the Titans a really good spot to rely heavily, heavily, heavily on the run this week. So even though he's expensive himself, I think that he could provide you a very nice pivot from, like I said, some of those cook shares to help differentiate yourself, but still be able to roster an absolutely elite player. Yeah, I like Derrick Henry. Um, for me, I really see Tannehill struggling this weekend. Um, so Henry is an obvious pivot for me just based on that. Uh, I think the game plan is going to go that direction. 20, you know, he's minimum 20 touches out of the backfield. That's just, it doesn't matter what, if they're down 30 points, he still touches the ball 20 times. So volume, talent, it's all there. Derrick Henry, I like it because I think I really think Tannehill struggles mightily against that Bears defense this weekend. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I'll say about Henry is I play him probably much less than the average person does on DraftKings um, because obviously, you know, DraftKings is a full point PPR where, you know, FanDuel is a half point. So Henry has a lot more value on FanDuel because he's not a, a pass catcher. So I tend to like, you know, guys like Kamara and CMC and Chase Edmonds, for example, this week, just because they do have that, you know, receiving upside where Henry really doesn't. But also, I don't really see any of those guys ever going for, you know, 200 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. And Derrick Henry can do that every week. So, uh, like I said, I'm always a little bit lower on him than, than most. But let's get to the heresy pick, Patrick. And I'll go ahead and I'll go first because... This is a guy that I kind of hate, but I like his first name, and I like his position this week, his matchup. So I got David Johnson, uh, $5,600, Texans at Jaguars. Now, he is a guy that is never going to break the slate wide open for you. Um, Now, the good news is he is very consistent. Uh, He sees 80% of the snaps uh, out of that backfield that out-touches Duke Johnson by a 4-to-1 clip, so... I mean, volume is not a concern for him. It's just, you know, he's not electric. He's not as explosive as kind of, you know, we we think of him from a few years ago. Uh, He does have a great matchup this week against the Jags. They are giving up the six most points to running backs this year, giving up just under uh, 23 points a game. Now, it may surprise you to know that over the past four weeks, he is actually ninth in the league in volume as he's averaging 19 touches a game. So, in a game where the Texans should be playing from ahead, all indications would be that Johnson will exceed his average touches. Um, And if he can just get to the average that the Jags are allowing, he comes in at a cool 4X. Now, that'd be a huge boon to your lineup, as his price tag at that $5,600 really does save you some money. You just, you know, you can't really expect a you know, 150 yards and three touchdowns from this guy, like I said, where he breaks open the slate, but he's been very consistent, just not spectacular, Patrick. Yeah, he's he's a good, uh, inexpensive, well, yeah, inexpensive, I guess, option at the running back position this week. Like you said, he's starting to get some touches. 
Uh, he's not the David Johnson of old. Uh, I don't think he ever will be, but he has been extremely consistent. And you're right, just uh, a good, solid game. And you're seeing 4X on that. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, not at all. So, but, but you know, you talk about explosive. Um, and my contrarian play this week, I don't think that there is another player in the NFL that you could call more explosive than this guy. And, and I'm talking about Tyreek Hill, 7,100 bucks this week, Panthers at the chiefs. This is absolutely not a good matchup. Any way that you look at it on paper, Carolina's in the top 10 in just about every statistical category that there is against wide receivers this year, this year, but speed kills. It only takes one big play uh, for Cheetah to make his presence known. I actually like Mahomes this week. I was kind of down on him last week, and that shows you exactly how much I know. Um, but I like Mahomes. He'll stack this weekend. I like running that back with some CMC. This is just 100% gut play for me this weekend. Uh, banking on a big play or two from the cheetah, Tyree kill my heresy. Yeah. I think any, any week you can easily make an argument for stacking Mahomes with either, you know, Hill or Kelsey and then Ryan it back with whomever. Now you'd spend a, you know, a, a dick load of money to, to play Mahomes and, and Hill and CMC. But I mean, yeah, that's, a- well, but that's, you know, one of the, top if not the top players at each position so if they all go go off which is entirely possible yeah it's going to cost your dormant a leg but then if you hit the rest of your lineup you know if, if you're looking all right so i mean i don't think there's ever a bad time to play any of those guys um speaking of um a bad time let's go ahead and get to our hail marys for the week patrick i i think we've got a couple of head scratchers here and i'm gonna let i'm gonna let you go first because yours is atrocious Okay, mine is atrocious. I'm getting close to home too, so we'll we'll run this down. Uh, my hail mary is the guy that's throwing a hail mary, and I've got I don't even know how to pronounce his Luton. last name. Jake, Luton. Jake Luton, uh, forty nine hundred bucks. Texans at the Jags. Uh, low price tag. Good matchup. I know absolutely nothing about this guy other than fact that he played with a bunch of beavers last season. Uh, Envy of all of us, I'm sure. Uh, Texans are giving up 260 yards a game, two and a half touchdowns a game, and just over 25 fantasy points a game. Two opposing quarterbacks this year. Watson and company are going to put up some points on this one. Lutton um, is going to get a chance to show off his arms so Jacksonville can see what they got in their rookie. Uh, This is going to be volume-based. Uh, for me, why the hell not? Jake Lutton, uh, leave it to Beaver. Uh, that's who I like for my Hail Mary this week. I got I to gotta tell you, if if my Hail Mary wasn't so similar, I would make fun of you so hardcore right now. <laughs> um, the, the only, well, the main thing I think that actually makes my Hail Mary, which again is going to be very similar the, to yours, is uh, what makes it different is that uh, the Jags have got james robinson to lean on and as bad as the texans are against the pass they are worse against the run so um right the question though is and this is you know how it always boils down is are they just gonna stack the box which is what i would do and say hey kid making your first start who sucked in college go ahead and beat us and so that's your concern with playing james robinson because he was another guy that really stood out to me this week i think he's 7k so, I mean, theoretically, Chase Edmonds and James Robinson are, are fantastic plays this week at good prices, but they both scare you, you know. So, I can see, you know, somebody making this play, but I don't see him getting to value necessarily. But with that being said, my guy might not even play this week. So, your guy might outscore mine drastically because I'm going with a guy based off of current information that we have as of friday at 7 18 p.m eastern standard time 
Um, and that information is that Matthew Stafford is very potentially not going to be playing this week. So, Chase Daniel coming in at a cool 4K as the Lions go into Minnesota to get their ass kicked. So, you know that I'll be the first one to tell you that rule number one of DFS is to play good players. And Patrick, I'm here to tell you before you tell me that Chase Daniel does not represent what a good player is. It's a, it's a fact. Now, to that though, I will say this. There is so much going on for this play that I honestly think that it has the potential to be a home run. And I am, assuming he plays, going to risk probably three of my you know 20 lineups uh, on this play this week. Lions are all but assured to get behind early in this one. So Daniel is going to be chunking that pigskin all over the field, man. Now, while it sucks that Kenny G is going to miss this game, I actually think that makes this play better. Because, Patrick, who in their right minds is going to be playing Chase Daniels this week without his number one target? This guy. This guy is going to be that guy. I'm going to be that guy. Now, Daniels should be chasing the Vikings on the scoreboard. Patrick, do you see what I did there? I did. I saw that. I was going to mention it. Very nice. Good one. Thank you very much. Now, at this small of a price tag, it doesn't take much of a game for him to hit 4X. And that allows you to save a shit ton of money elsewhere. Patrick, he's $4,000. He is the minimum at quarterback. So, he would allow you to spend a lot of money outside of your game stack where you can really load up on some of these great running back options this week. I'm going to stack Daniel probably with Hawkinson. And run it back with Dalvin Cook. Um, Run it back with Adam Thielen. Run it back with Justin Jefferson. That's where my three lineups are going to come in to play, my friend. Daniel with Hawkinson. Running it back with Cook, Thielen, Jefferson. I guarantee you Cook, Thielen, or Jefferson, one of those three is going to have a stupid game. It's probably Cook. Might be Cook and Thielen. Might be. Who the hell knows? But the point is someone's going to go crazy on the Minnesota side. If Daniel can just throw it enough that, you know, he's putting up. 20 points, I'm looking in great shape. As far as Hail Marys go, I think this is as good as it gets, my friend. Yep, that's definitely a Hail Mary, David. No doubt about but that. But what did I say? Do you remember last last year when Stafford got hurt and I said, I'm playing Jeff Driscoll. And what happened? Jeff Driscoll put up like 5X. Did he have a good game? No. Didn't have to. He just had to put up like 20 fucking points. So, yep. I mean, I'm 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 so serious when I when I say you know save the four grand here, and you can literally upgrade like two positions from average to like elite, um, and if he just has an a mediocre day against a terrible Minnesota team, you are you are going to be in really good shape. You have to hit the rest of your lineup, of course, but I think he gives you a, a chance to do that. Yeah, if he plays, if he uh, plays, Stanford's yeah. Out. Staff, and Stafford's out, and, and Chase Daniel is the the guy taking snaps. Then um, it, it's it's not crazy. It's not. No, like I, you said, for the value, the possibility, you know, for the return on that investment and the upgrades at multiple other positions, um, sneaky good little choice. Because you know that he's going to have to throw the ball, like you said. They're going to be behind, mm-hmm. and and they're just going to have to. Yeah, so. they're going to be in a dome. They're going to have good weather. They have a terrible defense they're going up against. I mean, I mean, if I, I hope that the weather is going to be good in the dome. I, I know, you know that, right? That's what I'm that saying. That was almost a guarantee, as far as I as I was thinking. But, but if I can get knows? if I can get forty attempts for four thousand dollars, I, I think um, you know I'm going to be good. Shape. I don't care if he throws two picks. I don't care if he throws a pick six. You know, none of that. None of that's relevant to me. I just need lots of yards and a couple touchdowns, and hopefully they go to Hawkinson. So that, that that's that's what I say, Patrick. Any any closing okay. thoughts here, my friend? Want to go ahead and, and get us on out of here? Let's let's get on out of here. Um, I am very interested to see which, especially if yours plays, which of our two hail marys outperforms one another. Oh, it'll be it'll definitely be Chase Daniel if they both play. I, I guarantee that. Well, well, what, kind, what kind of a little side bet do you want to put on this if Chase Daniel plays? What, number total number of points? 
if, if Chase Daniel sure. starts, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll throw 20 on that. Okay, let's do a $20 that's, that's, bet. That's, 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 I almost feel like I'm taking your money, but that's okay. Well, that's okay. I'm okay with that. And remember, I will be playing Drew Locke against you this week in our little matchup. That That is uh-huh. a fact, my friend. Good. I can't wait. Okay, Bart Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick. I uh, wish you the best of luck in everything but our matchup this week, my friend. Yeah, I need to get back on the winning side of things. Well, maybe, well, maybe Drew Locke will come through for you then. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna play him against you too. Oh, you son of a bitch! I'll fucking kick your ass (laughs) if you play Drew Locke. (laughs) All right, guys, we're out of here. We'll see you.